the anatomy of the skull. In the adult, the skull consists of 22 individual bones, 21 of which are immovable and united into a single unit. The 22nd bone is the mandible or lower jaw, which is the only movable bone of the skull. The anterior skull consists of the facial bones and provides the bony support for the eyes and structures of the face. The orbit is the bony socket that houses the eyeball and muscles that move the eye or open the upper eyelid. Inside the nasal area of the skull, the nasal cavity is divided into two halves by the nasal septum. The upper portion of the nasal septum is formed by the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone and the lower portion is the vomer bone. When looking into the nasal cavity from the front, two bony plates are seen projecting from each lateral wall. The larger of these is the inferior nasal concha, which is an independent bone of the skull. Located just above the inferior concha is the middle nasal concha, which is part of the ethmoid bone. A third bony plate, also part of the ethmoid bone, is the superior nasal concha. It is much smaller and out of sight, lying above the middle concha. The view of the lateral skull is dominated by the large, rounded brain case above and the upper and lower jaws with their respective teeth below. Separating these areas is a bridge of bone called the zygomatic arch. The zygomatic arch is the bony arch located on each side of the skull that spans from the area of the cheek to just above the ear canal. It is formed by the junction of two bony processes, a short anterior component called the temporal process of the zygomatic bone, which is the cheekbone, and a longer posterior portion, which is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone, which extends forward from the temporal bone. On the lateral side of the brain case, above the level of the zygomatic arch, is a shallow space called the temporal fossa. The temporal fossa articulates with the mandibular condyle of the mandible or jawbone. Bones of the brain case. The brain case contains and protects the brain. The interior space that is almost completely occupied by the brain is called the cranial cavity. The brain case consists of eight bones. These include the paired parietal and temporal bones, plus the unpaired frontal, ethmoid, sphenoid, and occipital bones. The parietal bone forms most of the upper lateral side of the skull. These are paired bones, with the right and left parietal bones joining together at the top of the skull. Each parietal bone is also bounded anteriorly by the frontal bone and posteriorly by the occipital bone and inferiorly by the temporal bone. The temporal bone forms the lower lateral side of the skull. The temporal bone contains some important landmarks. These include the external acoustic meatus, the internal acoustic meatus, the mandibular fossa, and the styloid process. The external acoustic meatus, or ear canal, is the large opening located on the lateral side of the skull that is associated with the ear. The internal acoustic meatus is an opening located inside the cranial cavity on the medial side of the petrous ridge. This connects the middle ear and inner ear cavities of the temporal bone. The mandibular fossa is a deep oval-shaped depression located on the external base of the skull, just in front of the external acoustic meatus. The mandible, or lower jaw, joins with the skull at this site as part of the temporomandibular joint, or TMJ. The temporomandibular joint allows for movement of the mandible during opening and closing of the mouth. The styloid process is posterior to the mandibular fossa on the external base of the skull. It is an elongated and downward bony projection called the styloid process. This is called the styloid process because it resembles a stylus or writing pen.
this structure serves as an attachment site for several small muscles and ligaments that support the hyoid bone of the neck the frontal bone is the single bone that forms the forehead the frontal bone is thickened just above the supraorbital margin forming the rounded brow ridges the occipital bone is the single bone that forms the posterior skull and the posterior base of the cranial cavity on the base of the skull the occipital bone contains a large opening called the foramen magnum the foramen magnum allows for passage of the spinal cord as it exits the skull on either side of the foramen magnum is an oval-shaped occipital condyle these condyles form joints with the first cervical vertebrae and thus support the skull on top of the vertebral column the sphenoid bone is a single complex bone located at the center of the skull it serves as a keystone bone because it joins with almost every other bone of the skull inside the cranial cavity the right and left lesser wings of the sphenoid bone form the lip of a prominent ridge that marks the boundary between the anterior and middle cranial fossa the cella tersica is located at the midline of the middle cranial fossa this houses the pea-sized pituitary gland the greater wings of the sphenoid bone extend laterally to either side away from the cella tersica where they then form the anterior floor of the middle cranial fossa the ethmoid bone is a single midline bone that forms the roof and lateral walls of the upper nasal cavity it also creates the upper portion of the nasal septum and contributes to the medial wall of the orbit of the eye within the nasal cavity the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone forms the upper portion of the nasal septum extending from each lateral wall are the nasal concha these are thin curved projections that extend into the nasal cavity in the cranial cavity the ethmoid bone forms a small area at the midline in the floor of the anterior cranial fossa this portion of the ethmoid bone consists of two parts the cristagalli and the cribriform plates the cristagalli which means rooster's comb or crest is a small upward bony projection located at the midline this structure functions as an anterior attachment point for one of the covering layers of the brain to either side of the cristagalli is the cribriform plate the cribriform plate is a small flattened area with numerous small openings termed the olfactory foramina small nerve branches from the olfactory areas of the nasal cavity pass through these openings to enter the brain the lateral portions of the ethmoid bone form the lateral nasal cavity wall and a portion of the medial orbit wall a suture is an immobile joint between adjacent bones of the skull the narrow gap between the bones is filled with dense fibrous connective tissue that unites these bones together the long sutures located between the bones of the brain case are not straight but instead follow irregular tightly twisting paths these twisting lines serve to tightly interlock the adjacent bones together thus adding strength to the skull for brain protection the two suture lines seen on top of the skull are the coronal and sagittal sutures the coronal suture runs from side to side across the skull within the coronal plane it joins the frontal bone to the right and left parietal bones the sagittal suture extends posteriorly from the coronal suture running along the midline at the top of the skull in the sagittal plane it unites the right and left parietal bones on the posterior skull the sagittal suture terminates by joining the lambdoidal suture the lambdoidal suture extends downward and laterally to either side away from its junction with the sagittal suture. The lambdoidal suture joins the occipital bone to the right and left parietal bones and the temporal bones. This suture is named because it resembles the Greek letter lambda.
The squamous suture is located on the lateral skull. It unites the squamous portion of the temporal bone with the parietal bone. The facial bones include 14 bones with six paired bones and two unpaired bones. The paired bones are the maxilla, the palatine, the zygomatic, the nasal, the lacrimal, and the inferior nasal concha bones. The unpaired bones are the vomer and the mandible. Although classified with the brain case bones, the ethmoid bone also contributes to the nasal septum as well as the walls of the nasal cavity and orbit. The maxillary bone, or maxilla, is one of a pair that together form the upper jaw, much of the hard palate, the medial floor of the orbit, and the lateral base of the nose. The palatine bone is one of a pair of irregularly shaped bones that contribute small areas to the lateral walls of the nasal cavity and medial wall of each orbit. The plates from the right and left palatine bones join together at the midline, forming the posterior quarter of the hard palate. The zygomatic bone is also known as the cheekbone. Each of the paired zygomatic bones forms much of the lateral wall of the orbit and the lateral inferior margins of the anterior orbit opening. The short temporal process of the zygomatic bone projects posteriorly where it forms the anterior portion of the zygomatic arch. The nasal bone is one of two small bones that articulate with one another to form the bony bridge of the nose. The nasal bones support the cartilages that form the lateral walls of the nose. Located at the medial eye orbit, the lacrimal bone is a small rectangular bone that forms the anterior medial wall of the orbit. The anterior portion of the lacrimal bone forms a shallow depression called the lacrimal fossa. Extending inferiorly from this is the nasolacrimal canal. The lacrimal fluid, or tears of the eye, serve to maintain the moist surface of the eye and drains at the medial corner of the eye into the nasolacrimal canal. This duct then extends downward into the open nasal cavity. In the nasal cavity, the lacrimal fluid normally drains posteriorly, but with an increased flow of tears due to crying or eye irritation, some fluid will drain anteriorly, causing a runny nose. The right and left inferior nasal concha form a curved bony plate that projects into the nasal cavity space from the lower lateral wall. The inferior concha is the largest of the nasal conchae and can easily be seen when looking into the anterior opening of the nasal cavity. The vomer bone is unpaired and is often referred to more simply as the vomer. The vomer is triangular shaped and forms the posterior inferior part of the nasal septum. The vomer is best seen when looking from behind into the posterior openings of the nasal cavity. In this view, the vomer is seen to form the entire height of the nasal septum. A much smaller portion of the vomer can be seen when looking into the anterior opening of the nasal cavity. The mandible forms the lower jaw and it is the only movable bone of the skull. At the time of birth, the mandible consists of paired right and left bones, but these fuse together during the first year to form a single U-shaped mandible. Each side of the mandible consists of a horizontal body and posteriorly a vertically oriented ramus of the mandible. The outside margin of the mandible, where the body and ramus come together, is called the angle of the mandible. The ramus on each side of the mandible has two upward going bony projections. The more anterior projection is the flattened coronoid process of the mandible, which provides attachment sites for biting muscles. The posterior projection is the condylar process of the mandible, or mandibular condyle. The condyle of the mandible articulates or joins with the mandibular fossa and articular tubercle of the temporal bone. Together, these articulations form the temporal mandibular joint, which allows for opening and closing of the mouth. The broad U-shaped curve 
located between the coronoid and condylar processes, is the mandibular notch. The mandibular foramen is the opening located on the medial side of the ramus of the mandible. This opening leads into a tunnel that runs down the length of the mandibular body. The sensory nerve and blood vessels that supply the lower teeth enter the mandibular foramen and then follow this tunnel. Thus, to numb the lower teeth prior to dental work, the dentist must inject anesthesia into the lateral wall of the oral cavity at a point prior to where this sensory nerve enters the mandibular foramen. The orbit is the bony socket that houses the eyeball and contains the muscles that move the eyeball or open the upper eyelid. The walls of each orbit include contributions from seven skull bones. The frontal bone forms the roof, and the zygomatic bone forms the lateral wall and lateral floor. The medial floor is primarily formed by the maxilla, with a small contribution from the palatine bone. The ethmoid bone and lacrimal bone make up much of the medial wall, and the sphenoid bone forms the posterior orbit. At the back of the orbit is an opening called the optic canal. The optic canal allows for passage of the optic nerve from the retina to the brain. Lateral to this is the elongated and irregularly shaped superior orbital fissure, which provides passage for the artery that supplies the eyeball, the sensory nerves, and the nerves that supply the muscles involved in eye movement. The nasal septum consists of both bone and cartilage components. The upper portion of the septum is formed by the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. The lower and posterior parts of the septum are formed by the triangular-shaped bomer bone. The anterior nasal septum is formed by the septal cartilage, which is a flexible plate that fills the gap between the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid and bomer bones. Attached to the lateral wall of each side of the nasal cavity are the superior, middle, and inferior nasal conchae. These are named for their relative positions. The nasal conchae are bony plates that curve downward as they project into the space of the nasal cavity. They serve to swirl the incoming air, which helps to warm and moisturize it before the air moves into the delicate air sacs of the lungs. This also allows mucus, secreted by the tissue lining in the nasal cavity, to trap incoming dust, pollen, bacteria, and viruses. The anterior cranial fossa is the most anterior and shallowest of the three cranial fossa. It overlies the orbits and contains the frontal lobes of the brain. Anteriorly, the anterior fossa is bounded by the frontal bone, which also forms the majority of the floor of this space. The lesser wings of the sphenoid bone form the prominent ledge that marks the boundary between the anterior and middle cranial fossae. Located in the floor of the anterior cranial fossa at the midline is a portion of the ethmoid bone consisting of the upward projecting crista galli and to either side of this the cribriform plates. The middle cranial fossa is deeper and situated posteriorly to the anterior fossa. It extends from the lesser wings of the sphenoid bone anteriorly to the petrous ridges posteriorly. The large diagonal positioned petrous ridges give the medial cranial fossa a butterfly shape, making it narrow at the midline and broad laterally. The temporal lobes of the brain occupy this fossa. The middle cranial fossa is divided at the midline by the upward bony prominence of the cella tersica which is part of the sphenoid bone. The middle cranial fossa has several openings for the passage of blood vessels and cranial nerves. The optic canal is located at the anterior lateral corner of the cella tersica and provides a passage of the optic nerve from the orbit to the brain. The posterior cranial fossa is the most posterior and deepest portion of the cranial cavity. It contains the cerebellum of the brain. The frontal sinus is located just above the eyebrows within the frontal bone. The frontal sinus is the most anterior of the paranasal sinuses. The largest sinus is the maxillary sinus, 
These are paired and located within the right and left maxillary bones, where they occupy the area just below the eye orbit. The maxillary sinuses are the most common ones involved during sinus infections. Because their connection to the nasal cavity is located high on their medial walls, they are difficult to drain. The sphenoid sinus is a single midline sinus located within the body of the sphenoid bone and just anterior and inferior to the cella turcica. This makes this the most posterior of the paranasal sinuses. The lateral aspect of the ethmoid bone contains multiple small spaces separated by very thin bony walls. Each of these spaces is called an ethmoid air cell. The hyoid bone is an independent bone that does not contact any other bone and thus is not considered part of the skull. It is a U-shaped bone located in the upper neck near the level of the inferior mandible. The hyoid serves as the base for the tongue above and is attached to the larynx below and the pharynx posteriorly. The hyoid is held in position by a series of small muscles that attach to it either from above or below. These muscles act to move the hyoid up and down or forward and back. Movements of the hyoid bone are coordinated with the movements of the tongue, the larynx, and the pharynx during speech and swallowing. Thank you for watching.